Hi gang, this is Dr. Eccles again. So glad to be back with you. And before we get started today, I just really wanted to give a shout out to all my fans and subscribers and say thank you for all the support and the emails. And uh, it's wonderful to hear from people all over the world uh, who email me and tell me what kind of benefits they've gotten from the videos. I'm very humbled by that. It's just a, it's a, a really a great gift. So thank you. Keep those emails coming. Appreciate the shout outs. Uh, today, we're very lucky. We've got Miss Mandy with us here today. And uh, I've heard through the grapevine that she might be having some shoulder problems. So we are going to talk with her a little bit about that uh, and find out a little bit of a history on it. And then afterwards, I'll kind of walk you through how I might go about looking at shoulder problems and differentiating those from, from neck problems. It's a fact that a lot of people come to me with shoulder problems, and it's not really their shoulder. It's really their neck. And, um, you know, I always, I always, you've heard me say it before. I have this little weenie dog at home. His name is Yoda. And if I accidentally would step on his tail, it's the other end of him that barks. So oftentimes where the barking is taking place is not necessarily where the where that's being damaged or the tail's being stepped on. So we're going to see if we can look into that today too. So Mandy, glad you're here. We're going to see what we can do to help you. Why don't you tell me a little bit about your shoulder issues? Um, it's mostly been hurting um, around this area mm -hmm. and then right here. Okay. All right. Yeah. So kind of in the front and the back. Yes. All right. And mostly it Mo mostly yeah. up here. How long has that been going on? Um, I want to say maybe like a month. Okay. Over a month. Okay. And do you have any idea why it started or what I happened? I don't know. Okay. So this would be what we call an insidious onset, which means we don't know why it happened. It just starts. She just woke up one day and it just started hurting which is kind of valuable because at least we know, you know, she didn't fall off of a bicycle and, you know, do some real damage there or, or those kind of things. So we're going to be looking for more subtle type of problems, muscle weakness, some other kind of thing that she could have done without necessarily any frank trauma to the area. So um, do, does it affect the way you move your arm? Uh, sometimes, yeah. Can you show me which, which way you move it and it hurts? Um, usually I try to stretch it mm -hmm. and I try to see how far I can go mm -hmm. it hurts this way. And then if I try to like pull it back. Okay. Oh, especially if I go up. Okay. When you go up, it really hurts. Okay. Does it feel like it hurts way down inside and deep in the joint or does it feel like it's more in the muscles or do, can you tell in muscle. more in the muscle? Okay, good. So, you know, we, we want to take that into consideration. Of course, we're still going to do our exam and, uh, figure out what's what tissue is actually the one that's being damaged. Sometimes the patients just have kind of a general idea of, well, it just kind of hurts over here, you know, when I do this. Um, so it's up to us, the doctors, to kind of differentiate and figure out, well, is this a muscle problem? Is it a, a joint problem, a ligament problem, tendon? What's, what's actually going on it's here? So if you've happened to watch any of my past videos, you will know that we use a lot of muscle testing to help us kind of figure out where the problems are. And so nothing will be any different about that today. We're actually going to do some muscle testings to find out which muscles have, uh, are not working, if any, in her shoulder joint, and then we'll take the appropriate um, treatment from there. Are you ready to get started? Yes. All right, let's check it out. I'm going to have you lay here on your back. And most of the testing that we do is usually on the back. Sometimes we do other things. And some of the adjustments that we do to people, they're on their stomach. But this is usually the way we start off. And we're going to just take a good, strong muscle here first. And I like to have them keep that, what does it say? Be calm. Yes, we got to be calm. She's got a little tattoo there. Be calm. That's a great philosophy. Okay, so uh, we want to have her keep this elbow in. We don't want her to have her arm bent like that because she'll be recruiting other muscles and maybe affect the test. So we want you to have your arm kind of in a hyperextended area there. And you're going to hold... There you go. Perfect. She already knows what to do. So she's going to hold that area there while I'm pushing down. And we're just making sure that that muscle there is strong. Now, that's good. Now, 
the first thing I want to do is start checking the different muscles. And each muscle that we test has a different test associated with it. And you'll see what I mean when we, we, we uh, start. And I'm going to go ahead and call the muscles out for those nerdy kind of people out there that are like me that just want to know the names of things, okay? We're going to go ahead and do that. The first uh, muscle we're going to check is called the posterior deltoid muscle. And we're going to put her arm in this position. You can see it here. And I'm going to have you, Mandy, just push back real hard that way for me. And that muscle locks in place really good. It's perfectly strong. There's nothing at all wrong with it. The next muscle that we are going to check is um, her triceps. So this one, we're going to put her arm straight down on the table, and she's going to give kind of like a karate chop down this way. So push against my hand here. This muscle is very rarely ever weak. Uh, it was about a week or two ago I had a guy come in, and his was so weak, I don't think he could have opened a door. His arms were so weak. It was just like, boom, collapsed. And he had a herniated disc up in his neck, and we were able to fix that. But... Uh, this muscle is very rarely ever weak, at least in my experience. So the next muscle we're going to check is the, uh, these muscles in the fingers here. I want you to push your hands, fingers out, and don't let me push them in. Okay. Now, these, course, these last three muscles that I have checked correspond to nerves that exit the neck. Now, you've got seven cervical vertebra here, starting at the very top one, which is called the atlas, C1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. The fifth one down is the nerve root that we were checking with this muscle here, the posterior deltoid. The next one is the C6 nerve root, which is pushing down this way, checks the tricep. Actually, it's, actually that's, uh, it's a little bit confusing. It's actually the C6 nerve, C7 nerve, and now the C8 nerve here. Now, the next muscle we're going to check is your upper trapezius, and I'm going to put her hand with the thumb facing me here, and we're going to have you push up that way real hard for me. And that she's really straining, but that one is not going to work. Okay, did you feel the difference in, in what a, a weak muscle and a strong yeah. muscle feels like? It's pretty obvious, isn't it? So we know that the upper trapezius is weak. The upper trapezius is this muscle where you guys are always trying to rub and you're getting sore all up and through here. Or you're tight, you get a lot of tension. Sometimes it can radiate back up into the head and cause headaches. That's the upper trapezius. So now we're, there's three branches of the trapezius muscle. It's a huge muscle. And uh, this is the very top part of it. To check the middle part, we're going to rotate her thumb down to the floor having her keep her elbows straight, and she's just going to push down into my hand here. I'm going to brace the shoulder, push down. That one's working pretty good, so we're not too concerned about that one. The lower trapezius, we're going to put her hand up here. Her thumb is again down, pointed like this, and we're going to have you push down into my hand. And that one's real strong, too. That muscle's locking in place. So the only part of the trapezius that's not functioning on her is the upper part. There's another muscle that we can test while we're right here doing this. And this is the serratus anterior. And that's that muscle that comes right around this area. We see sometimes those in bodybuilders, those ripped muscles right there. That's the serratus anterior pushed straight down. And that one's working fine. Now, we'll just drop down. We'll turn the hand like this into this position. And I'm going to brace here on the wrist and over here on the shoulder. Mandy, you're going to push across that way for me. And that one is checking the um, pectoralis major. There's three divisions of that muscle. The other one is we're going to have you turn your hand this way. And you're going to push across this way toward my hand. Push across. Very good. And then the last one, you're going to push down into this way. Very good. All of those are working fine. So we don't have any problems with that. So let's move on to the next muscle, which in this case is going to be the uh, subscapularis muscle. You might have heard me mention this on another video. Subscapularis muscle is probably the most important muscle in the shoulder because it stabilizes the shoulder. It's the muscle that keeps everything else kind of working the way it's supposed to. 
And the way we test this is we're going to have you have your arm here and you see the arm rotates down like this. You're going to just push down into this hand while I push back. Go ahead. And actually, thank goodness, hers is working pretty good. But I will tell you this, if you test this muscle on somebody and you find that it's weak, you really want to kind of advise these people to not go out and lift a bunch of weights uh, because if their muscles are not working properly and if the shoulder is not stable and they go out and they lift weights, they have a really great chance of tearing something or hurting something. And I've seen this happen over and over and over again. So it's also a good idea if you plan on starting a weight training program or you start to go to the gym to go to um, a, a doctor who does muscle testing, applied kinesiology, who can test these different muscles and find out if you're actually ready to, to go into a weight training program. Because I find people all the time who are fixing to start to the gym and they have five or six muscles in their shoulder that aren't even working. So the chances of them getting into the gym and hurting themselves are almost 100%. They're going to hurt themselves if the muscles aren't working properly. So get the muscles where they're all firing and they're all working properly, and then you can go in there and uh, try to hurt yourself. <laughs> uh, so I laugh because so many of my patients, that's why they come to me, because they went to the gym and they're trying, they get hurt do, doing it. So you got to be very, very careful. That's the number one rule about working out is do, no, do not hurt yourself. And I never could do that. I always hurt myself. All right, so where were we? We checked the subscapularis. Now we're going to check the infraspinatus. This muscle lies right along the back side of the uh, scapula there, the shoulder blade, and you're going to push back into this hand. Very good. Excellent. Now, that one works fine. We're going to check the supraspinatus. This muscle comes from the very top of the shoulder blade, and it comes down and it hooks right onto the, this big bone here. It's called the humerus, and there's nothing funny about it. Push up this way for me. There we go. That's working pretty good, too. So the only thing we found so far is that upper trapezius, which is enough. You know, that's be some really bad problems, but we've got a few more muscles to check. We're going to check the latissimus dorsi. And for this one, there's several different divisions of it, but we're just going to check this one. The index finger goes directly against the thigh here. You're going to try to keep your arm close to your body. Don't let me pull it out. And it actually is working pretty good. We're looking for those muscles to lock into place. I could, of course, make, I'm stronger than her. I could actually pull her arm out if I wanted to, but that's not what the purpose of these tests are. The purpose is to find out if that muscle will lock into place. And for instance, when we did this test and we asked her to push back, push back, the muscle just won't grab. It won't lock into place. It's ratchety and it's weak and you can just tell it doesn't work right. All of the other muscles, when we checked them, mm, they locked right into place. No problems at all. Mm. <laughs> all right. So now the challenge is that we're going to try to get it where we can fix this muscle. And by the way, this we see this muscle, it's, it's probably the number one muscle that I fix in my office, uh, especially in the upper extremities because people are typewriters, all or typewriters, computers all day, shows you how old I am. Um, computers all day, they're, they're on their cell phone like this, their necks forward, their heads forward. And, and plus, a lot of times people's necks are not situated back over their head and their head's way forward, which means these muscles have got to contract all the time to, to hold up the head. And what I see happen is they'll run to the massage therapist and they'll, and they'll get a massage. It'll do great. It'll feel great for about a day or two or maybe even a week, but then it comes right back. And the reason that does is because they never really address the cause of the problem, which is their head being way forward. And that's something that you would need to get, you know, some chiropractic work to get that head situated back over your body, relax all these muscles here. Oh, another thing about the forward head posture that I can tell you is that when your head is forward like that, it's putting so much strain on the neck that you're going to develop some degenerative joint disease, which I know most of you know what that is. It's arthritic change that takes place in the neck due to the fact there's just way too much stress on it. 
And unfortunately, you won't really know about it until it's fairly advanced. So it's always a good idea to go into the chiropractor, have him check that, especially if you're getting headaches or neck pain or shoulder tension, because that's probably what's going on. And if it's caught early enough, you can actually correct that problem so that your neck will last for a whole lifetime. Many of you have probably had your parents suffer from you know, degenerative joint disease or, or herniated discs up in the neck area, uh, all kinds of problems that, you know, we don't want you to suffer the same fate. So one of the ways to do that is to get a really good chiropractor who knows how to do this work and have them take care of it. Okay, so the only muscle that we found in this shoulder that wasn't really working properly, and I do want to check one more. I just thought of it, subclavius. We're going to have you turn your hand this way. Everybody can see her hand is this way. It's right here. And you're going to pull your hand, hand toward your head. Don't let me pull it down. Okay. And that one works good. That's rarely weak. I don't see it weak very much, but it, it's fine. So we've got an upper trapezius that doesn't work. We're going to kind of start plugging that into the system and see where we go. Now we're back to this. I'm going to have you hold your arm there. All right. Now, close your eyes a minute. Open your eyes and leave your feet apart, Mandy. Don't let those feet tap together again, okay? There's uh, certain acupressure and ac acupuncture points that are on the body that relate to these muscles. And you'll see me... Um, See me using those uh, from time to time. The one that's showing up right now is called a neurovascular point. And on her, it's right here. So it's going to be right here. And this muscle, this point, corresponds to where this muscle originates or where it starts. Does that feel kind of tender there? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. And oftentimes a person will tell you, yeah, that's the spot. It feels really tender. So the upper trapezius muscle actually comes, starts right here, right where the base of the skull starts to drop off into the neck. And I'm holding this neurovascular point by her eye simultaneously while I'm holding this point. And you might want to... Um, kind of poke around and feel, and the patient will let you know where it's the most tender. That's the, that's the spot that you want to hold. And what we're feeling for here is pulsing. And after a while, you'll start to feel these pulsing. And sometimes you'll feel a pulse in one finger, and then you'll feel an, a pulse in another finger. What we're trying to achieve here is to get those pulses in Synchrony, harmony. <laughs> we're trying to get them to pulse together, okay? That's what we're trying to do. And you know, I laugh and I tell my patients, this is like having relatives that are estranged from one another. This, this point on your body is stop talking to this point on your body for whatever reason. So I'm kind of like a mediator. And I'm like, come on, guys, let's talk. Let's talk this out. Let's get, be a family again. So we just gently hold these points. You don't have to put a lot of pressure. A little bit of pressure is fine, but you don't have to push hard. You can actually use a fairly light touch. And we're just looking. She's about to go to sleep, I can tell you already. We're just kind of feeling for the pulsing there, and it's starting. Sometimes these, pulse, uh, these points will start to pulse within a minute or even a few seconds. Other times, if it's very severe, it could literally take 20 minutes to do. It could take a long time. Rarely do we ever have it take that long, but it can. And as you practice this, your sensitivity to these pulses will get better and better to where you're able to feel them. I had a, a really uh, a very nice gentleman email the other day and wanted me to send him all of the points for these. And I told him, I, I said, the book is a mile wide and a mile thick. I, 
There's no way I can do that. So don't email me and want to know where all these points are. You'll just have to learn applied kinesiology. But any good uh, practitioner will know these. All right, so we got a good pulse on that one. Let's continue on here. Keep that arm right there, young lady. Perfect. Okay, so the next thing that is showing up, keep that arm right there. There you go. is not a problem in her shoulder, but it's a problem in her back. And you remember what I told you about my little dog Yoda. So we could find problems that were associated with her shoulder anywhere in the body. It could even be an organ. It could be a nutritional deficiency. It could even be, um, you know, it could be anything. So, but in this case, it's going to be her 10th thoracic vertebra. And so to adjust this one, I normally will have you lay on your tummy. Okay, so the muscle testing turned out that, uh, that she's got a vertebra that's out of place in her very lower portion of her thoracic spine. So let's just take a minute for those of you who don't know the basic anatomy of the spine, just to kind of give you an idea. We can start down here with her tailbone. This is her coccyx right here. And then the big bone that that's hooked onto is the sacrum. And then the next thing we have up here, of course, we have the hip bones that connect to that sacrum right here. And then we have five lower back vertebrae. They're called lumbar vertebra. Five starts at the bottom. Five, four, three, two, one. In a, and this is in a normal person. Sometimes we have variants of that, but let's just stick with the normal anatomy for right now. Then the next vertebra up is the T12, which stands for thoracic, the 12th thoracic vertebra. We go up one more, 11 and 10. And 10 is the one we're interested in. Breathe out for me right there. Little push like that. Now lay on your back for me. Very good. All right. So now we'll go back to this. You got your feet apart there. Keep that arm locked in. Good. And that cleared that one. And now we've got the VOR, which is right here. So there's another point that comes up sometimes in this. And this one is called the vertebral, I'm, I'm sorry, the visceral organ reflex. And this one is right beside C2, which is right here. And on this one, I want you to reach up and touch right where I was with that hand. Okay. All right. So I'll get back here and touch this one. And then we're going to put this on. Feel how, is that muscle tender right there? Yeah. yeah. So that's very, very tender on her. So a lot of times when these muscles, when they're not working, it's because they're in spasm. And when, when you have a muscle that's really contracted, there's nowhere else for it to contract. So it's very weak. It's not going to work properly. So if we can find all the reasons that that muscle is in spasm or not kind of hooked up to the rest of the, the body, then and correct those, then we can restore that normal function. Person's a whole lot better off. Okay, I think that's got that. Okay, so now it's showing us that your neck needs an adjustment. Okay, guys, 
we have been uh, working on Mandy's shoulders. We found on her right shoulder that she has an upper trapezius muscle that's not working. And that's really all we found was that one muscle. So when we were doing our testing, we found that she had a, one of her thoracic vertebrae that was out of place, and she had some of the acupuncture, actually pressure points that were, needed to be stimulated in a certain way. So the last thing that we did was we found out that she's got a problem in her neck that's actually affecting this. So I'm going to save that for uh, the part two of this video, so be sure to tune in. Again, I want to thank all of my subscribers. We just love you guys and appreciate all the support. And if I can be of any assistance to you, please feel free to email me or call me uh, at the number below, and we'll do what we can to help. Thanks.